that, um, and these, these two were totally devoted to God and serving God. You know, just think if you have a whole bunch of those in a church, what could be done, right? Woo! You know, just on fire for the Lord. But they were totally de um, dedicated to God. Simeon, they said, was just and devout, uh, dedicated to obeying God's word, waiting for God to fulfill his promise to comfort or console Israel with the Savior. He was waiting. But through the Old Testament, I always thought about the coming of the Messiah, Isaiah. You know, a child, um, uh, there'll be a sign to you, a virgin shall give birth. You know, and, and different signs throughout the Old Testament that um, points to the coming of the Messiah. And Simeon was waiting patiently. And, and the Holy Spirit told him that he would not see death until he let up uh, uh, put his eyes on yes. the Messiah. Yes. And uh, and then so, um, and so his name means God has heard. God has heard. And he was led by the Holy Spirit. Then Anna, a prophetess, my introduction, okay, my introduction is okay. Um, a prophetess, um, and what it meant by that, it didn't mean that she told the future. She didn't say, give me your palm, let me take a look at her. You know, she wasn't that kind of prophetess. That she just spoke God's word. Yes. You know, she taught God's word. She, she uh, um, you know, mainly was talking about the coming of the Messiah. You know, and so she was on fire and waiting for the Messiah. Now you gotta look at her life though. She was married, young. But then she was a young widow. She was only married seven years from her virginity. Seven years and her husband died. She was an 84 year old widow, where Paul claims here in scripture. 84 years old, a widow for 84 years old. She was probably 100 and some, uh, a little over 100 or, or so calculating, you know, for her birth and her marriage and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but she married young and she was a young widow. Um, and she was the daughter of Phineal of the tribe of Asher. One of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. Uh, taken captive by the Assyrians in 722 B.C. We covered that, you know, in, in Nahum and Zephaniah and all that. Um, but Asher, Man, uh, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves, and they came back to Jerusalem. All right, so a, a, a little remnant came back. You know, they humbled themselves, came back, and we see that in Second Chronicles 30:11. Nevertheless, divers of Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came back to um, Jerusalem. And so um, she was of the tribe of Asher. Uh, and so their descendants were among those who were carried away captive to Babylon and returned to Israel after <coughs> the exile. Um, and so here we're going to start out with the first point. And, and the consoler to Israel. And let's take a look at verses 25 to 31. It says, uh, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the constellation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen uh, the Lord's Christ. Yes. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him and the custom of the law, then he took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which has prepared before the face of all people. Yes. And so he was waiting on the constellation of Israel. What do you suppose that means, the constellation of Israel? And so the word consolation in the Greek is parakalesis. It means comfort, solace, that which affords comfort or refreshment. 
thus of the messianic salvation. So the rabbis called the Messiah the counselor or consoler or the comforter. <coughs> All right, so they were waiting for the Messiah to come. The Messiah to come. And just picture this, though. Simeon was probably at his house doing the odd you know, ch um, chores or something. Maybe he was spit shiny in sandals. We don't know. But he was doing something. All of a sudden, he got an urge, and, and the Holy Spirit tells him, get to the temple. Get to the temple. And he comes, and he rushes over to the temple. Yeah. And he sees Mary and Joseph. I mean, the Holy Spirit has been leading this, this man. Um, and so Simeon was looking for the personal consolation of salvation for himself and for the national deliverance promise in the Abrahamic and Davidic covenant right, of the, the, the coming of the Messiah. Right? And Simeon had heard, uh, or Simeon had a heart for his people. The, the Jews, you know, and he wanted, um, you know, the, the waiting for that Messiah. You know, just like today, we're waiting for him to call us home, aren't we? Yes. Aren't we excited about that? Yes. I'm looking every day, you know, saying, Lord, when? I mean, look at how the world's getting. Right now, we're getting flooded. <laughs> yeah, I got to do a backflow just to get over here to church. <laughs> But, I mean, even the evils in this world and what's happening in this world. I mean, Satan is running amok. He knows his time is near and we're coming into the end times. And, and, and I know that, um, you know, Christ is coming back soon or to call us back home. Not the second coming, but to call us home. And the church is going to be raptured. And I can't wait for that day to come. And we need to always be on guard for that day, you know. And doing the right thing. I mean, just think when the rapture hit, what would you rather be doing when the rapture hit? I want to be praying or I want to be in church, right? Yeah, that would be good. I don't want to be sitting back watching TV and the Lazy Boy. <laughs> but you know what? Um, but he had a heart for um, his people. Um, just like Paul did in Romans 9, 3. And what did Paul say? For I, I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren and my kinsmen according to the flesh. You see the heart they had for their people? You know, and this is the heart that we need for our, 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 our loved ones and our family and our friends and everybody. You know, that, that we need to be sharing our faith with them, sharing about Christ. I mean, it is the truth. And Christ came to pay the penalty for our sins. You know, and the only way we can get to heaven is through who? Jesus Christ. You know, and but he, he you know, and and what what topped it all off that when they killed him on the cross, he paid that penalty. Alright? He didn't stay dead. He rose again on the third day to give us eternal life. Yeah. And, and 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 he sits right next to the, 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 the Father, the right hand of the Father. You know, interceding for us. Yes. And, and, and I just can't wait to that day that he comes and calls us home and we'll be in heaven for all eternity. And what a blessed day that will be. But the heart that Simeon had for his people, the heart that Paul had for his people, you know, we need to have that same type of heart for people. And so because they were under Roman oppression, I mean, just look, look what the Jews went through in World War II. I mean, um, locked up, they were gassed, murdered, shot to death. Just because they were Jewish. Yes. And, and the oppression they went through just here, in, you know, um, in the world, uh, in, in, this, in the, uh, the 19th, uh, excuse me, the 20th century. You know, that, uh, what they went through, but they've been going through this oppression, but here they're going through oppression of Romans and and they can come in your house any time and search your things. They can beat you. They can they can squeeze all the money from you. Take all your money. I mean, how much do we complain when we have to pay taxes? Right? Yes. And how much they take out you? They took how much out? But and and have no say so at all in bondage by the Romans. And so, and, and, and uh, the believing remnant craved for the deliverance from their oppressors. Of course, they had it kind of reversed. 
they they thought that the you know, you know the Messiah was going to come out of the white cloud, riding the horse, and everything, and, and take care of the Romans and their oppression and everything. But Christ came for um, to die on that cross because to pay the penalty. Said, because what makes people evil like that? What makes people mean? Sin. It's sin. He came, and look what they did uh, did to Christ. I mean, they beat him with the cat and nine tails. I mean, just scorched his back and everything and ripped his flesh from his body, you know, uh, for us. And so, and so they were, um, they longed for that restoration of their national sovereignty and their national blessings promised in the Abrahamic and Davidic covenant. They waited for the new covenant with its promises of forgiveness of sin, a new cleansed heart, and the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. That's what they're waiting for. In Jeremiah 31 uh, through 34, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After these days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in the inward parts, and it, write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more uh, every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the last of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. And Simeon blessed God for keeping the promise to let him see the Messiah. He just didn't see the Messiah. He held the Messiah. Do you picture yourself holding God in your hands and looking down at him, holding the same hands that formed you in your mother's womb, that created this world into existence? Looking into those eyes, the eyes that see your heart. That must have been an aw uh, a wonderful, awesome experience yes. for Simeon. Yes. And he looks at him and he says, Now I can go home. Yes. Now I can leave. Because the promise has arrived. The promise. As a rock. And he says, you know, and so imagine the peace and the satisfaction to see the <coughs> promise fulfilled. Simeon's soul found rest as, as the infant Jesus rested in his arms. Simeon was basically saying, Lord, take me now. My work is done. You've got your word. Jesus is coming back again to call us home. In 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, 16 and, uh, through 18, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, angel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And here the word comfort is paracleto, a derivative of paraclesis, right? And it, and it means to console, to comfort one another. And the comfort of Israel has arrived. And so, and then, the next point I want to make is that Jesus is the light, the light of the world. But let's take a look at 32 and 35. It says, A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. 
And so he's a light to light the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. Remember we're going through the, 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 uh, the book of Romans and we, we, we show that how the Gentiles have always been, it's not an afterthought of God, but it's always been that the Gentiles get sent. What was the Jewish people supposed to do? They were supposed to spread the word throughout the world. So they kept themselves. And they said, okay, we're Jews, we're great. And everyone that's not a Jew is nothing. You know, and so, uh, but God has always had plans for the Gentiles, uh, and, and like Jesus, He even said that their sheep um, um, that are, are are part of this fold, you know, and which is talking about the Gentiles that came to, to come to know Christ, and so um, he, He's a light to both Gentiles and Jews. Remember, we are grafted in to the family tree. Remember, we talked about that in, back in, in Romans. And so we see in Isaiah um, uh, 42, 6 to 8, it says, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and I will hold thy hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And he came to open the blind eyes. Those who sit in darkness, you know, their, their eyes are blinded by Satan. Those who are in bondage because of sin, in the prison house of sin, and bound by Satan, he came to set free. And so, and look at what happened um, in, in, in here we are and in Luke, but what happens over in Matthew? Who comes because of the shining star? Who follows the star? The wise men from the Babylon area, Gentiles, Gentiles that are coming to present the gifts um, um, to, to the um, to Jesus. And so uh, we see here in, in Matthew 1, uh, 2, 1 and 2, it says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship. Us Gentiles have always been a plan of God's. Always. And we're grafted in to the family tree. And so salvation is offered to all people, Jews and Gentiles alike. And it's, it's really here, Simeon, right in the temple, making this proclamation, you know, of a light to the Gentile. I bet you that got some heads turned. Gentile, where, where, where? Get the Lysol. That's what kind of mentality they had. Well, anyways, uh, salvation is offered to all the people, Jews and Gentiles alike. And we talked about this in Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And Jesus said, He is the what? The life of the world. In John 8, 12. And then Jesus spoke again and said unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And there's so many out there today that are blind. They sit in darkness. Their souls are as black as the ace of Because they don't know God. They don't know Christ. We have the answer. We have the hope. We are to share that hope that's in us with them. To share the light. We are the reflectors of the light. You know, we are the ones that reflect Christ's light. And, and so the, the, then he said, This child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel. He is destined to be the determiner of people's destiny. In John 
Um, one, I'm going to read 9 through 14. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We are saved by God. Amen. Nothing that we can do. We can't earn our way into heaven. That's right. Our works is things that we do after we're saved. Yeah. It's kind of like, all right, how many here had a good job? I mean, some are retired and some had a good job. How many worked for your company one year before you started getting paid? No volunteers there? Uh -huh. Oh, you want something for your hard work, right? I want money. But the thing is, is see, our works don't save us. But when we're saved, we want to do everything for the one who saved us. And so then we are on fire for Him. He is our all in all. He is our, our everything. You know? It's not what this world has to offer because everything in this world falls apart. Mm -hmm. And I found out years back that even if you buy something and you don't use it and it just sits there, it still falls apart. After you knock off the thousand piles of dust off. <laughs> and, and, it, and it doesn't work. And I said, well, I, just never, I never used it. It sat in the box all this time. <coughs> But dampness and the elements and everything else has a play. Things that we don't see has a play in things uh, falling apart. And and then it says that he, Jesus is going to be a rock of offense. Um, because he says here uh, in verse 34, um, and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. The rise and the fall of many. Jesus was going to be a rock of offense, especially to the religious leaders, because he was going to bring forth the real word of God, not their twisted logical uh, laws and everything else and putting people into bondage and, and um, penalizing people and stuff. You know, they had uh, the heart of the law, but they didn't have the spirit of the law and and and, and the love of the law. And so Jesus was going to come and let me tell you, he, he broke down a lot of laws, a lot of barriers, especially where women are concerned. You know, women wouldn't, uh, or men wouldn't talk to a woman unless it's his wife in public. It wasn't done. A Jew would not talk to a Samaritan. They were filthy dogs to the Jews because they were half-breeds. They were part Jew, part Gentile. And, and, and the Jews didn't like anyone that was not pure. Does that sound familiar? Um, and so Jesus broke all these barriers down and he was a rock of offense to many. In Romans 9.33, it says, As is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Um, and only the believing, believing remnant are saved. And, and in um, Ephesians 2, uh, I want to read 6 uh, through 9. Uh, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. By for grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. 
You know, and, and so it's not by the works that we are saved, but it's by God's grace. Right. And here Simeon was holding God's grace, his son, that was going to come <coughs> and die on that cross for us. And he says right here, and a sword, he said to Mary, and a sword will pierce even your own soul. I mean, what Jesus went through and had his mother watch was horrific. I mean, mothers love to protect their children, watch over their children. And seeing them get a, a little scrape, they get all panicky and stuff. My mom did. You know, one time, you know, she had me out in the yard in a playpen. And I was big for my age. I was a big dude. And um, I think I came out weighing 100 pounds. <laughs> but I was in this playpen and I wanted to get out, so I, I, I took the whole playpen and I bounced with it. I went ba boing, ba boing, ba boing. And I bounced over the yard with the whole playpen until I got to the sidewalk and then I dumped myself over. <laughs> Mother had a fit, but, but I scraped myself and everything. Of course, she goes in a panic mode and she calls the doctor. Back then, you could call the doctor and get appointed the same day. Yeah. That was back in the good old days. Uh, now he got to wait two months uh, to get yeah. seen. But uh, he said, bring him in, bring him in. My mom always said that, uh, that she wanted twins. The doctor said, well, if you had twins, I'd have to take tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Call them for everything. But, um, but a mother's love, you know, and, and see what she went through. And, and Simeon uh, prophesied that a sword is going to pierce to your own heart, to your own soul. You know, because he's going to see. And um, in John 19, 25 and 27, it says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister. I hear the trumpet. Are we ready? <laughs> knew we should have ate that cake last night. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the trumpet. Did anybody else hear the trumpet? No, 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 no. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus' his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by, whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. You know, Jesus had half-brothers and half-sisters. You wonder why he told John to watch over her. Because John knew who Jesus was. His brothers didn't know until after his resurrection. And Jesus knew that John, the beloved, would take care of his mother. And that's one thing for the heart of a child, is that his mother is taken care of. Yes. And, and so uh, Simeon had prophesied um, all this when Jesus was just a baby, that her heart would be pierced by a sword. And, um, and on that last point, I want power today is the glorious hope of man's redemption. And we see Anna. Anna comes on the scene now. She runs in uh, and in verse 37 she, um, excuse me, in verse 36 and there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of uh, Phineal of the tribe of Asher. She was a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from their virgin, her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And she coming in that innocent gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake to him um, of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And so this woman, 84 years living in the temple, serving God in fasting and prayers, prayers and fasting, day in and day out, 
You know, and, and, and they look back or look forward to this generation, and you can't get people to stay in church for an hour. And they got to go, what? 12 o'clock, you better wrap it up. I got places to go and people to see. You better not be long winded today. Well, you got you got back then. I mean, they, in, you know, of course you didn't have your MTV and you had your uh, cable and all this and that. I mean, she wasn't, you know, laying back on her recliner watching, uh, you know, Israel News or something. You know, and Israel today. Israel today, you know. Um, but uh, but she served the Lord even at her old age, night and day. She didn't worry about another man. Or get a man, she had her, which was God, you know, and she served him daily. That kept her busy enough. And served him in living in the temple. And so, and then, you know, she gave, it says, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all that look for the redemption in Israel. Redemption is lutrosis, a ransom, redemption, a ransom, redemption, deliverance, especially from the penalty of sin. Christ has redeemed us by his blood and he paid the penalty for our sins. Um, and so he redeemed us, just like you get a gift card. You know, you have so much money on that gift card that says you redeemed it. That means you go and get something and then you give them the gift card which pays for it for the money that's on the gift card. You're redeeming that Christ gave himself to purchase us. To purchase us. He redeemed us. And you have uh, Galatians uh, 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He became sin for us yes. on that cross. All the sins of the world were placed upon him. And God judged his son at the cross. Because sin has to be judged. Um, and so we put our faith and trust in Christ because he already paid the penalty and that judgment is already taken. You know, then you know, and we ask for forgiveness of our sins and, and our sins are wiped clean. The slate is clean. Everything we thought, said, did, anything that was God, all of our sins have been wiped clean. And so he has redeemed us. And so he is the glorious. And she, um, again, 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver or gold from your vain conversation received by tradi traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish, blemish and without spot. He is our glorious hope. He is our glorious hope. And so is Christ Jesus. And first um, Peter 121, it says, Whom by do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, the true living God, who sent his son to die for us. And so she spoke to everyone, said that she spoke to everyone about uh, Jesus. And he is the coming Messiah. You notice here um, um, in, in verse 38, and she coming in, that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all of them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. And so she spoke of the coming Messiah. She spoke of him and told him all about Go back to the Old Testament. Bring it out. Just like Jesus did with the, the disciples on the Emmaus Road. You know, he brought them where? Through the scriptures, right? And, and talked all about him. And so she spoke to everyone about Jesus. He is the coming Messiah. There was Others longing for salvation who did not know that it had already come. She decided, I'm going to go tell it on the mountain. I'm going to go tell it everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. The Messiah has come. 
I'm going to tell him. And that's what we should be doing too. Tell him. Tell him. And so, in conclusion, how about you? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? A one-on-one, -on -one, not a religion, not I sit in church on Sunday and I smile at the preacher and hope you don't ask me a question. <laughs> But a, a personal relationship like you would, you know, with a relative or something. That, that, that's what God wants, that re relationship. Yes. Prayer is communication. Prayer is talking. Anna was in conversation with God daily. Yes. And in fasting, what do you do? You, you fast and you take something away that you really and truly enjoy to show God you're serious. You know, you take away that pleasure that you like. You know, and most of it back then was food. Food. And, and so they, they fasted for so many days and everything, um, and showing the seriousness of their prayer to God. And, and so uh, with fasting and prayer, she had that relationship. Um, is Jesus your all in all? Do you serve him daily? Are you studying his word daily? Are you devoted to him daily? Just like Simeon and Anna were daily here in the temple. Daily they were uh, in God's Word and preaching God's Word and teaching God's Word. You know, I mean, you know, when we sit and we try to learn all this other stuff that doesn't, <clears throat> computers and all this other kind of stuff that doesn't, uh, being a, a beans, really, when it comes down to it. Because, you know, what is it? You gain the whole world, you lose your soul. Think on the eternal things. <laughs> The eternal things matter. They're lasting forever. Our cars don't last forever. Our houses don't last forever. Our, our nice furniture and stuff don't last forever. We try to keep it up. But it falls apart, breaks down, does things. You know, and so, but, the, but God is forever. Christ is forever. You know, and we need to be on, uh, thinking on Him, devoted to Him. Are you looking for Him to call you home? Are you looking for Him night and day? Are you waiting for that rapture? Just like we heard the trumpet sound here a few minutes ago. And I didn't think I was... I said, I'm ready, let's go! But are you waiting for the coming of Christ? Is He your light? Are you sharing His light? Are you hiding, or are you hiding it under a bushel and you're keeping it to yourself? We need to shine the light, pass the light on. Just like a candle, like we do with a candlelight service. We light one candle, then they pass it on, another, 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 another. And soon we have, I mean, look how dark this world is. Look at mothers are killing their own children. You know, babies are being aborted left and right. Even left to die after birth. You know, we, have, we are living in an evil society. And, and evil is running among, and we need to be preaching and teaching and evangelizing and sharing Christ. Are you telling people your story, how you came to know Christ? You know, and uh, it doesn't have to be elaborate, it doesn't have to be a, a Hollywood type script. Tell the truth what Christ has done in your life. That's what people want to hear. They want to hear reality. There's enough reality shows on there, which I don't think are reality, you know what I'm saying? They have to cut and edit and all this kind of stuff, so that's not real. You know, when you've got a camera in somebody's bedroom, that's reality. Yeah. You know? But just, uh, you know, all this kind of, they call it reality shows. I don't like those shows anyway, but... Um, yeah, I'd rather just watch a good entertainment, but... But anyways, but, you know, we need to tell your story. What Christ has been doing in your life. How you got saved, what you were before you got saved, you know, and tell your story. People want to hear. People want to hear. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word today as we looked at Simeon and Anna, two devout uh, children of yours, Lord, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And Lord, we just thank you so much, Father, for your word. And and we, we saw with their lives and everything and how uh, Simeon prophesied, you know, of, of, of the light to the Gentiles. And Anna prophesied the redemption of Israel. And Lord, we just thank you so much for your word today, Father, that all this has been already planned from, from, from the beginning. 
in Genesis 3.15, when man sinned, and your redemption process was already in place. And we thank you so much. Be with each and every one of us. Be with Nancy today uh, and tomorrow and she, um, you know, for the calling hours and for the, uh, the funeral tomorrow, Lord. And her heart is just so broken that she lost her husband in uh, 60 some years. And Lord, we just pray about for her and her children and help them through this, Lord. Guide them. You are the God of all comfort. Comfort them through these difficult times as we praise your name. And Lord, we also pray that your word will go forth and pray that, that somebody will come and know Christ through all of this. And Lord, we just pray, Father, that your light will shine so brightly as we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord.